Well, Erica, congratulations. I watched the doc and it is so good. And it's so wonderful seeing you succeed and being so happy and, you know, kind of fulfilling a dream. Thank you. Hi, nice to see you. I appreciate you watching and I hope you enjoyed it. It was a real, um, you know, look into my life as we mounted this Vegas residency. No, definitely. I mean, what what's it like now that you're a few months out of it and watching this back and realizing so much that you have had to overcome and almost kind of rediscovering yourself in the process? What has that been like for you? Uh, truthfully, I watched the Let It All on Blend like last weekend and I thought to myself, my God, what was I <laughs> like? What was I thinking? You know, like, well, who did I think I was that I could go in here, mount this show and document it at the same time? Feels really good. You know, I'm happy to have come this far. I'm happy to have had the chance to start over and go forward. And life is much better than it has been. Good. Yeah. You know, I, you, there were some setbacks um, along the way when you were putting this together. Was there ever a doubt in your mind that this wouldn't come to fruition or you wouldn't be able to pull this off? I knew I could pull it off. I knew I could pull it off, but what, there were moments I was like, come on. Like, it was very difficult for me at times to access the Erica Jane performance persona, which is an over-the-top, you know, caricature. But, and, and it had been so easy before, and we discussed it in Bed at All on Blonde. And that was the hardest thing because I kept looking at, you know, the screen content or whatever, and I'd be like, why can't I find that sparkle? Why can't I find that place where I feel super free and super, like, just, you know, confident? Erica, this is everything that we pushed for and worked for. Here's your moment. You know, you got to show up for yourself. And then I think a lot of it is, you know, when you, you get these negative loops, you go through something personal, it does change you. And then you have this outside noise of this personal life still creeping in it doesn't let you be totally in the moment and totally happy where you're most happy yeah but when do you feel like it clicked and you were able to kind of channel that erica jane again i think it was you know the day of the show the very last run through was like you know what this is it and there you have to get out of your head yeah it is what it is the show is here you are fine. This is where you rely back on all of your skill and all of your experience. I'm like, Erica, I've done, I used to do eight shows a week. Like, what's going on with you? Okay, it clicked in the last day and I was like, this is it. We're good. And you could see just how emotional you were when the final show, when the first show is over and we kind of check in with you the next day. And it's like, oh my God, I did this. Like, you know, after everything I went through, you kind of proved to yourself again, not only to, to everybody out there, but probably to yourself as well. Yeah, and that's the most important person. At the end of the day, you know, you're in competition with yourself. I'm not in competition with the other girl or the other guy down the street. I'm in competition with myself. This was a journey for me, Erica, putting myself back on uh, my feet and moving forward from something that's just been really, you know, terrible for the last couple of years. Definitely. You know, you do open up about your marriage and life, you know, post Tom. But what was interesting to me is that, like, you know, you said that he made you so comfortable in your own skin. He was a mentor to you. And then all of a sure. sudden you lose that so suddenly. So what was the biggest transition for you not having that in your life anymore? You touch on something that's very important for me is like you know when you've been married to somebody for over two decades no matter what anybody thinks about the relationship when not having that person there somebody that did encourage you that told you these things were possible that believed in you and sometimes you didn't believe in yourself is hard not to have you know i i sort of said like you know tom was the safety net and i was able to you know stand out there on the high wire and if i felt it was okay because somebody believed in me well when you don't have that person any longer you're looking toward yourself. You know, you have to look inward and you have to be your own safety net and your biggest cheerleader. Fortunately for me, I have good people around me like Mikey, Laya, my mother, my son, and even the dog, you know. Uh, but, you know, that was really, you have to turn inward and you have to become your own safety net. Right, no, and I mean, you, you talk about how hard things got and how dark things got for you that you really thought at times, maybe I can't do this anymore. So what oh, yes, it was very hopeless. It was hopeless. Right. I mean, and I don't think a lot of people would be able to kind of pull themselves out of that. So and, and especially in such a public way. 
So how were you able to do that? And how were you able to kind of come out on the other side? I know you said your son was a big catalyst in that for you as well. Sure. My son, my therapist, my mother, Mikey, Laya, the people that know me the best, the people that have been here with me when things were not pretty and they were ugly. And that is something that, you know, I will forever be grateful to those people. And you have to really want to move on. You have to really want and stick it out. You got to stick it out because it's uncomfortable. And I remember asking my therapist, like, when does this go away? Like, when does these this grief, this, you know, all of these negative feelings, when does it go away? And she said, it doesn't. You have to sit with it and you have to be okay with that. And then you have to pick yourself up and you have to put one foot in front of the other. And it really is baby step, baby step, baby step. And then those steps become a little bit bigger and bigger. And do you feel like you're okay with it now? No, I'll, I, look, I, yes, there are times I am okay. I'm, a, you know, I'm human, like the rest of us, we're all human. So do you slide into negative things? Of course, but you have to bring yourself back to center. So it's a constant reminder of, hey, I want to stay in a positive state. Hey, you know, doing this is not, you know, aligned with what I what I want to do. So it's all about choices at the end of the day. You have to make the choice to pull yourself together and go forward. And if you can't, you need to reach out for help. And that's exactly what I did. And I was fortunate that I could get it. That is, that's great. But it's hard to move on and kind of focus when, you know, you're still dealing with, I mean, we see it in the doc when the, somebody from Tom's legal team is knocking on your door at night. I mean, and you're like, now I, now I have to move. Like, you, you know, the, it's, I'm sure that's impossible to deal with as well. The fact that that was even caught, you know, that we, that happened on camera is unreal. And, you know, you can't, that just came out of nowhere. The office of the public defender coming and saying, hi, can you talk to us? what like what you know no like gosh, i'm over here you know got a show like i'm i'm trying to put my life back together and it really was like a tap on the shoulder of like your old life and your old problems reminding you like uh, uh, uh you know you're not we're not, we're still here and that's a tough thing to go through you know and just to, and then it's it's on camera it, it, you can't you cannot make this shit up. No, you can't. No. You what, can't. Right. Do you and Tom still speak often? I know that like he was calling you at that time, like pretty much all the time. Right. So no. Um, the day that I euthanized my dog, I was actually like the vet and I were here and, you know, we were, I was holding him and my phone was ringing and it was Tom and I just, you know, I cannot do this any longer. I blocked his number once and for all. I haven't heard from him since. I lost my dog. Um, and there you go. You know, and that 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 is where I'm at. And that's what happened. Do you feel at peace with that? At peace with which part? <laughs> it's a very it's a very complex answer. I mean, I wish I could give you a straightforward answer. Say, yeah, it's great, but no. I mean, you know, it, there's so much going on and it's so very layered, to be honest. Yeah, no, I, I, I couldn't imagine. And, you know, he is, they, a judge did find him competent to stand trial. We see that in the documentary as well. What was your reaction to that? Because obviously you have had conversations, you say in the doc that, you know, he's not. Well, no, what I said in the, in the doc is that I don't know if that is competency under the law. I know what I lived and what I experienced. So that's where I leave that is, look, I know what I went through. Whatever's, you know, in in the court of law, that's their decision. Right, definitely. You know, the, over the course of this season of Beverly Hills, you know, you were looking for the apology for the ladies about um, the judgments that they made upon you when you were going through everything. Do you feel like after we see this reunion, do you feel like you got that closure and those apologies that you needed or wanted? What I really wanted was an acknowledgement of what I had gone through and the mischaracterization and the judgment and the rush to judgment and rush, rush to, uh, you know, accusations and not really letting me explain myself and listening when I said, guys, I cannot talk about this. Like, I don't have the answers for you and I may never have the answers for you and I may never have the answers that you guys want. And that's what I was looking for was I said from the very beginning, this was a very long process. It was not going to be easy and it was not going to be quick. So 
was I glad that, you know, I got some acknowledgement of, hey, you know, yes, I am. And moving on and moving forward. Mm -hmm. How did you feel overall about this season? Uh, you know, the, much lighter for you than it has been the past few years. So do you feel like almost kind of invigorated? I feel great because for the first time I was not having to defend myself every day and feel like I had to, you know, have a million different answers, uh, you know, for a thousand questions that I could not answer. So in that respect, it was nice to catch my breath. It was nice to be able to relax a bit. It was nice to be able to enjoy myself. And I think that you see that, you know, the work I've done in therapy has really given me a good path to that. Definitely. Oh, Erica, you had me howling with Merce in the Purse. Oh my God. Like, Oh gosh, Merce in the Purse, but he really was in a Ziploc bag and I'm not making it up. And I mean, as you can tell, and you know, it was a moment just like, Merce is in the purse, man. He really was. It was just Merce was in the purse. But I don't think Merce has ever been, you know, and shout out to Merce, wherever he may be in the universe, because he's come back as a cultural phenomenon. So I think that that's kind of amazing, you know. No, and it's, it was really cute. A little side thing with Sutton text me, you know, when the New York Times thing is, she's like, Merce would be howling from heaven. And I said, perfect. You know, like, he loved a good joke. So there you go. Merce is back with us, you know? Totally. Erica, I really didn't envy you sitting in the middle between uh, Kyle and Doreen during this uh, reunion. I'm just like, I'm like, Erica needs to be, wants to be anywhere but here right now. Do you think the two of them can kind of come back together and mend this friendship? Absolutely, I do. I think they both really care for each other. I think that it's been a tough year for both of them for different reasons. And I think that Look, provided two people really want to repair and move forward, you can. I've seen it done in this group many times. I've done it myself, and I know that they really care about each other. This has been tough for Kyle, tough for Dorit. They'll get through it. And yes, I was seated in between it and, I, you know, in between them. And I was just kind of like, you know, at one point, I, you can see me just kind of like push myself back so they can actually look at each other. Because it's a tight sofa. You know, it's a tight little couch. You're, we're all kind of, you know, and... You know, it was a it was a lot of energy that day. I was just happy it wasn't about me. So I just I was thrilled. You know, You're like let me get my popcorn. Let me let me just. I could go all day just seated. It was fine. Was Dorit wrong in showing you the text message? It's a tough question because you know it's personal and it sucks. And that's why you see me say, I hate this. I hate every minute of this. I don't want to see this. I don't want to know this. And then, you know, it's, it's, that will have to be sorted out between the two of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you feel like Dory kind of lives in this bubble sometimes, like Garcelle said? Listen, I think we're all guilty of living in our own bubbles. I don't think that what Dory did was intentionally, you know, harm uh, to hurt Garcelle, but it did. A bubble, we could all be accused of living in a bubble. And I think, you know, we all do to some extent. Whatever your bubble is. I got to get your take on this because um, what do you make of Am Anna Marie taking to social media and implying that Crystal admitted to her off camera that she lied about uh, Anna Marie to secure time? Listen, you know, Anna Marie has a story to tell and that's her truth. And, you know, she's where within her rights to say what happened to her, just like we all are. Do you believe it? Anything is possible on this show. I've seen, I've seen a lot. <laughs> You've seen it all. And then finally, you know, I, this has gotten a lot of headlines of you saying Kyle getting eviscerated and things like that. Um, how do you feel Kyle is going to feel about um, herself, the show and everything after this reunion airs? Well, first off, let's be clear about what I said. I said, I was eviscerated. So, right. I said, yeah, because it's been twisted. So let's, you know, I said, look, I've been eviscerated. Basically what I'm saying is, Andy, are you going to be as tough on Kyle as you was on, as you were on me for the last two years? And I think Kyle, and you can see this, she understands, like we've all been in this situation, you know, where we've all had to answer the very hard questions. And he does ask them and you'll just have to stay tuned to see her answers. Definitely. Well, Erica, it's such a pleasure as always. Congratulations Thank on you. Bet It All in One. People are going to love this. It really is. It's so fantastic. So congratulations. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And I'm glad you enjoyed it.